Hello, I'm Katie Derham, and welcome to the Richard Burnett Historical Collection of Early Keyboard Instruments, which forms the core of what used to be the Finchcocks Musical Museum, and which is still the most exceptional resource and charity for anybody who's passionate about early keyboards. Hello, I'm Jean Phillips and I'd like to introduce you to the Richard Burnett Historic Collection of Instruments. This instrument is a square piano and it's a misnomer because as you can see it's not square, it's oblong. It's made from wood which has inlay and the dark wood contrasts with the light wood in the front giving it a very pretty appearance. In Germany at this time, square pianos weren't called square, they were called Tafelklavier, a table piano. Much more suitable name really, because as you can see, it's not square, it's oblong. Um, so what you could do is you could close the lid right down and if you close the lid right down, it made a table and you could eat your supper off it. And then after your supper, you could open it up and then you have the evening's entertainment. I'd now like to tell you a little bit about the levers that you can find inside this square piano. These are mechanisms to make a sustaining sound and another separate mechanism which gives you an effect like a harp stop. And the levers are here, and when you move them, they take the dampers off the strings and the strings vibrate. You just move them slightly to the side and that makes it work. The other lever, which is a harp stop, that is very strange. It has a baton of wood, and on the baton of wood, there are leather, pieces and these leather pieces are then pressed onto the strings and that sort of chokes it a bit. Um, it makes it more abrupt sound, i.e. it's more like a plucked sound, a bit like a harp. You can hear it's slightly different from the normal sound. This instrument is made by Longman and Broderick an 18th century firm who sadly went bankrupt at the end of the century. This enabled Clementi, Muzio Clementi, the wonderful Italian virtuoso pianist, composer and teacher, to take the firm over and he then developed it so these little instruments grew and grew and eventually you will see on other videos of this collection larger Clementi instruments. One of the main features of this instrument is its sustaining mechanism. And the sustaining mechanism isn't a pedal like we have on modern pianos now, but it's two hand levers. Now this is not at all practical because if you're playing you don't have a hand free to move the lever. But I'm just going to play you a little piece called Mrs. Hamilton of Caitlin's Strathspey, very difficult to say, um, a little Scottish piece which I found in one of the novelist Jane Austen's manuscript books. What you can see on the keyboard is in fact my manuscript copy of hers. Um, and you will hear that it makes quite a lot of noise. Um, it's this sustaining sound because you can't change it.
Jane Austen, the novelist, was also the family pianist. She came from a large family, brothers and one sister, and we know that she played the instrument because we have records of her um, actually playing. We also have her music. We have a collection of music, some quite difficult music, plus her manuscript books. There was no photocopying in those days, so you had to copy out the music by hand because music was incredibly expensive in the 18th century and 19th century. I'm going to play you a piece from Jane Austen's manuscript book and you can see a copy of this, in fact it's a facsimile, on the music stand um, and that is Jane Austen's own handwriting. It's a rondo, it's by Steibelt and it's a very pretty piece, very suitable for this instrument. It uses the whole range of the instrument, including the very top notes. Thank you for listening to this little square piano. I do hope you've enjoyed it and I thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to find out more about the charity and the workshops and the events that take place here, then please do so. If you'd like to support, we'd like you to do that as well. Go to the comments section beneath this film or go and visit the Finchcocks charity website.